Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, new jobs in Huntsville. Also, the V-Team takes a look at the Hubbard evidentiary hearing. And Speaker Hubbard's legal team says they had a bombshell. Just like Wiley e. Coyote. It go boom. All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. The Voice of Alabama Politics with your host, Bill Brett, and The V Team with Claire Austin, Susan Britt, Jack Campbell, Baron Coleman. Charlana Spencer, and special reports with Jonathan Barbie. Now, the number one political show in Alabama, The V. Welcome to the Voice of Alabama Politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt. And as always, I'm joined by the B team. Welcome all. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. It has been one of the more busy weeks since we've left session. There's a lot of political news and a lot of legal news to get to. But first off, Jonathan, a man you know very well, Terry Dunn has decided to get out of the PSC race. He was going to run against Twinkle Kavanaugh. What are we to make of this? Uh, well, I like Terry Dunn. I, I think he has good intentions. Um, I ran against him uh, last year, and uh, he was a formidable opponent, along with uh, Chip Beaker and Philip Brown. Um, I think he's taking on a big dog to try to take on Twinkle Andrus. Um, she, Twinkle Andrus Kavanaugh, she has been there. Um, she was chairman of the Republican Party, and she is a tough fighter, and she would definitely take the fight to him. I don't know about him dropping out. I, I think it's probably wise because he needs to take a break. He's been campaigning hard. He campaigned hard last year, uh, and I think it's just a, I think he was taking on a bigger dog than he can handle. Jack, I mean, politically, it seems suicidal. Yeah, I think, um, the people that care the most about those issues, the coal industry and Alabama Power, uh, we're going to make sure that that Twinkle keeps her job because she has been she has been good for the industry, um, I think. Um, and, and I was not, you know, Twinkle will tell you also, we've never been the closest of friends, but um, you know, you got to have a reason to challenge someone. Yeah, I think she's done a very good job where she is. I like Twinkle. I mean, I, I do think too. the world yeah. I do she's too. Good. She's very popular. She hasn't made, made a misstep, as far as I know. Uh, and people like her. And they're jobs, jobs, jobs. There are jobs, <laughs> jobs, jobs. jobs, jobs. <laughs> One of the best political strategies I've ever heard. Job, well, you can job, credit job. Bill Goolsby for that. Bill is a smart guy. He and is. I love he Bill. Is, he is. Bill and I go way back. And he is, guy. as the, uh, what's that group would say, uh, he is a sharp-dressed man. Yes, yes he is. He is. Uh, another another sharp-dressed man, Arthur Davis, uh, tried to go back to the Democratic Party, and the Democratic said, no deal. You're out. Now he's suing them, Jack. You know, I, I got to know Arthur during the mayor's race a little bit because of our radio show. We had him on once a month. I think he needed a little uh, gestation period after the election. I think he needed to sit back and watch the landscape and really decide what he wanted to do. He's a man without a country right now. Uh, he was a Democrat in Congress, uh, made a speech to the Republican National Convention just a few years later, uh, kind of ran as a Democrat for mayor, even though it's a nonpartisan election. Yeah. And now he wants to be a Democrat. He needs to sit back and just digest all this, and and there may not be a place for him, except, well, you know. And, and the party has a rule called the Radney Rule that says you can't switch back within a four-year period. He went out, and he left the Democratic Party in 2012, and now it's 2015, and he wants back in. 
and they have a rule that says you can't do that. And they also have Joe Reed. <laughs> they do have Joe Reed. <laughs> well, you know, you, you, you spoke of political suicide earlier, and I like Artur Davis, I really do, but I believe someone who's committing political suicide is Artur, da Artur Davis right now. Um, he has made both parties mad, <laughs> and that leaves him nowhere except yeah. to run as an independent and go get thousands of signatures. Um, he made the Democrats extremely angry when he came out in 2012 uh, and said that he wanted to be a Republican, support Republicans. So then he, he runs Republicans. He goes to the dinners. I, I saw him personally, and now he's saying he's going to run as a Democrat. Talking about flip-flop, I think it's bad news, and I agree with Jack. He should have set out uh, for some time and figured out where he felt comfortable running. Well, you know, this is the thing we see all the time, and, and our legislature is full of guys that were Democrats just four years ago. Some of them, let, I mean, five years ago. Some of them less time than that. They just switched once it became convenient. But they did it once. Yeah. He's trying to do it twice. Well, people I, don't like it when you do it one time, but twice, that's suicide. Well, in that body over there, you've had lifelong Republicans who act more like Democrats than the Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Sure. Tax increases? Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the thing that drives me nuts is that we are awash in opportunist and no ideologues. These people don't, they don't have any ideals, that, they don't have any strict philosophy, they just, wherever the wind blows, Jack. Yeah, wherever the money comes well, from. There's always <laughs> that. You know, it, it's interesting though, when you look at what's going on, I mean, and they have really tried to make the Democratic Party, the Black Party, and the Republican Party, the white party. And that's no good for any, it's not good for democracy, it's not good for the state, it's not good for the country, in my opinion. No. I think we need a strong two-party system to make it work. I mean, look what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have any friction except within the Republican Party. They can't make up their mind who they are. This is very true. I, I just think it, it's a shame. Uh, it's a little bit of a shame uh, the way this has worked out. But I wish Artur all the best. He's, he's a good guy. He is. Uh, you know, something good that's in the news this, this past week is Governor Bentley got to Take a victory lap up in Huntsville. Uh, GE Aviation's expanding up there. Susan creating three, 300 jobs. I mean, Huntsville has always been a town on the move. It really has. And, and to go up there, we lived there years ago. To go up there now and see what it's like is amazing. Uh, this GE facility is, and which, by the way, this is the only facility of its type in the United States. Uh, there's, there's one in Japan and there's one in France. Uh, but they'll be building in 2016 this, this expansion creating over 300 jobs, and uh, it's $2 million investment. I mean, $200 million $200 investment. $200 million. Wow. It's amazing, uh, you know, and I, I think you you got to give Tommy Babble, the mayor of Huntsville, great credit. He has done an excellent job. This guy could be a great governor if he could get the, get some traction, but well, two, I don't know if you can. Two years there. ago, he brought in Remington? Yeah. Well, he's, that long ago. he's brought in company after company. Yeah, Huntsville yeah. is... A growing metropolis in Alabama. Yeah, I like Tommy Battle too, but I will also say that Loretta Spencer laid a lot of that groundwork. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. She was very pro business and and helped improve that climate up there. And I I think he stepped right up to the plate and done a great job. Yeah, he has done an excellent job. I mean, it's, and it's just a great town, really. It it's, really is. I mean, uh, it's got restaurants, it's got entertainment, it's got great schools. So some, they're doing something right up there. And it's very organized, like an engineer's mind. It's, you, you just, if you've ever been around engineers, when you go the way the whole place is laid out there, it's like the entire inside of an engineer's mind. It's well, pretty wild. That's why they call them rocket scientists <laughs> up there. Yeah, I've worked with some of those it's, rocket it's scientists. It's the only place in Alabama when you go, well, it doesn't take a rocket science, but we got one. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. <laughs> so true. So true. All right, we're going to have to leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back with some more news and analysis. The V is sponsored by Spot On Strategies Group.
sadly, this happens too often in families with autistic children. First nightmare, their child wanders off, disappears, and is nowhere to be found. Where her body was found just a couple hours ago. An autistic boy wanders away from home and dies. Welcome back to The Bee, the voice of Alabama politics. There has been an ongoing discussion lately that raising taxes has damaged the Republican brand. Uh, I think Terry Latham was totally correct when she made that assertion. Uh, it is not Republican to raise taxes. I think Ed Henry, though, who said it's that we had a governor who, who didn't tell us the truth about taxes. We, we have a speaker who, who won't tell us the truth about uh, uh, the ethics laws that he says are unconstitutional. And we got a Republican supermajority that raised taxes. Uh, Susan, it, it, this is not the Republican Party of Ronald Reagan. It is not the Republican Party. And there are many like Ed Henry who are just furious about this, these taxes being raised. Uh, they ran on no taxes when they first got there in 2010. They ran again on them in 2014. And now they're made out to be liars. And they're very, very upset. And I don't blame them. Yeah, I mean, Jonathan, yeah, I mean, I don't know how much you can comment on this. You're part of the establishment committee there. And, but it, it, it does seem, it gives people the wrong impression, I think. Well, it, it's no doubt. I, I do serve on the uh, Republican Executive Committee. And I will tell you this, uh, in, in speaking with many of them, we are furious and angry at things that have happened, especially in this last term in the Republican Party. The Republican Party is not supposed to be the party to raise taxes. Right. And we've raised taxes. Um, uh, n let alone our leadership was indicted on 23 felony counts and nothing has been done about that. Um, people are upset. They're ready for a change. Uh, and the fact that we have had our taxes raised here in Alabama uh, there needs to be something done. And I think Chairman Lathan is doing everything she can. Um, there's only so much you can do because it takes a majority of the 400 people on the executive committee to make a move. Well, her style is not to get too far out in front. That's she, right. You know, there are my and people. And not I'm, necessarily a bad no, style. No, it's not. It's well, not. but in a newsletter, she all but praised everybody for raising taxes. Yeah, I know. I'm it, sorry. She can say it's hurt the brand, but she's weighed right in there with it. Well, I, I don't disagree with Jack in that sense. I mean, I would just shut up. I wouldn't have said a thing. And Bentley, I mean, that just gets in my crawl worse than anything. And what happened to Reagan Republicans? I mean, <laughs> where, where has that gone? I mean, Alabama was supposed to, we were supposed to be the core of conservatives throughout the country, yeah. and especially the South. And if you look at us now, I, I, I was in Ohio last weekend, and people were meant, walking up to me and mentioning, hey, what's going on with your Republican Party down there? Y'all are raising taxes? Your governor's <laughs> getting divorced? What's happening? <laughs> well, you know? family values and, and fiscal conservatives. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, you know, I want Ed Henry to know, because I have picked on Ed and dog Ed. Ed, you were right, buddy. What, what you just said about <laughs> our brand and about the governor, I don't disagree with. Well, you. it's just a craziness. Well, he's not the only one that feels that way, oh, which is good. So. Hey, well, this week was the bomb that never detonated, or it may have detonated <laughs> in their face. Mike Hubbard and his legal uh, 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 people, especially Mark White, have been bragging about, oh, after our first three witnesses at this evidentiary hearing, everyone's going to know we're going to expose the prosecution for being crooks and liars. And Susan, you were there, the only crooks and liars I saw. We're sitting in the witness stand. Yeah. <laughs> well, that one for them. That one, yeah. Uh, Sonny Reagan, uh, former deputy assistant attorney general, got up. And the first day, he had a pretty good because he was just talking to Mark White. The second day, and Susan, I want you to talk about this a little bit. He was eaten alive. He couldn't remember his own name by the time they got through uh, He with certainly it. couldn't remember how to tie his shoelaces, that's for certain. Andrew Brasher went after him. And he did it so well that you could see that, that Reagan was visibly shaken. He couldn't remember anything. He couldn't remember when he hired 
uh, Rob Riley. He couldn't remember conversations he had with Josh Blades. He couldn't remember what those conversations were about. But he could remember every cotton picking thing that Matt, ev Matt Hart ever said disparagingly against Mike Hubbard. This that was crystal clear. Th this sounds like a selective memory or uh, what, what was it you called it the other uh, early onset? Uh, perjury or something. <laughs> I did nothing. A reporter said that. I didn't say that. I wasn't there. But no, it just seems like, uh, and I don't know Sonny Reagan from Adam's house cat, but you know, for him to be the quote star witness for the defense and he ends up only recall he has is about things that happen with thermostats in the AG's office and skirmishes with Matt Hart when he couldn't remember phone calls and memos and even lunches he had with people. Um, you know, he ended up being a poor witness. I'm sorry. And he could remember the dates that he filed these memos yeah. and the dates that, that the conversations between he and Matt Hart happened, but then couldn't remember when he hired Rob Riley. Well, and they, they, had, Not Rob, even in a month they, they had a phone call between him and Rob Riley mm -hmm. on the day he was writing the memo up, the final draft of the memo, but he couldn't recall speaking to him, but he sure knew everything on that memo, Jonathan. <laughs> I can't remember what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know how I feel about this whole thing. Uh, cue the circus music right now, because yeah. this whole Hubbard trial is nothing but a circus. Mark White, his legal defense team, uh, they are trying to make this a circus, hoping that jurors will forget what's going on, yeah. that the trial will be put back two years so people truly can't remember things. I mean, you have to have a pretty good memory to remember two years back. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're going to have to go back and read their testimony, talk to their lawyers. And so all I have to say about this is exactly what I say. Cue the circus music. It's just a circus. And I hope that our people uh, in Lee County can see through this. Well, and that, you're right. One of the things they're doing is playing to the jury pool, try to taint the jury pool. I mean, Susan, they had 40 witnesses. The defense had 40 witnesses, narrowed it down to 37. How many did they actually showed up? I think they actually ended up with six. Six. That was uh, it. That was it. Uh, out of all, and then from my understanding is they kind of, it was going so badly they kind of wanted to call it quits. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got your star witness on there. Brasher says, uh, if I, if I, uh, would you tell us about the conversations you had with Josh Blades? You know, Josh was Mike Hubbard's chief of staff at the time, and he said. Uh, tell us about the conversations where you leaked grand jury information to him, basically. And he goes, well, I don't recall that. And then, then he said, what do you... He said something about if I called Josh Blades in here, would you would you be calling him a liar? Yeah. Would he be lying to me? Right. I mean, it got so bad that the judge would would be working on something, and he'd just look over at Sonny Reagan like, I can't believe you just said that because I know better than that. I, I mean, nobody was buying it. And this guy served as a deputy attorney general in our state's attorney general's office. You know what? That brings up a good point. He is also Jack, the guy that prosecuted Milton McGregor, and the other. Jackal in the bunch mm -hmm. is Gene Sisson. Who was the second on Mark, Mark White's That's uh, right. uh, witness, witness list. list. And he Sorry. also uh, uh, just, I mean, he, he, he testified against Milton McGregor. How can we believe, believe him, Jack? Well, I don't know that you can. I yeah, mean, it, it, this whole thing. Of course, I don't blame Mark White. I've dogged him a lot. But, you know, Mark is trying everything he can, turning over every rock, and there's nothing there. And, you know, this is what you do when you're on a defense team. But just, and, and what is that old saying? Don't ever ask the question something you that you don't have the answer for. And they, they, did, they had Mark Coulson on Yeah, there. they did that They too. did it multiple oh, times. Man, you can just see the was... shock and awe in their face. All right, we're going to have to leave it right there. We'll be right back in a few minutes. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. First nightmare, their child wanders off, disappears, and is nowhere to be found. Where her body was found just a couple hours ago. An autistic boy wanders away from home and dies.
Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You know, Susan, we know that criminal attorneys are not, they're not that fond of the truth. They, they really, they, they don't never let the facts get in the way of truth. I'm glad Charlotte's not here because so, she'd hit me. <laughs> <laughs> but with her, the size that she's gotten with the new baby coming, it, it's understandable she's not here. Uh, well, have you seen but, her husband? No. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, he's, a, he's a good looking guy. Uh, Very eager to be a father right Jay, now. Jay Mark White sent a confidential memo to Judge Walker and said that he would like for the trial postponed until after April. The reason being is that Mark White has been elected dean of the International Academy of Trial Lawyers and he is, has to give the keynote speech. But it turns out it wasn't exactly what it appeared, was it, Susan? No, it wasn't. It would appear that in October they decided to make him dean, and right. they were going to crown him come March, right. or right at the beginning no, of April. The April, was April at the, at the like Rich Carlton, D.C. Right, right. Turns out when you go back and look at their bylaws, they elected him back last March. They're right. elected a year in advance, and the only responsibility that the dean has is to deliver that speech. He knew from March on... And then just all of a sudden brought it up to the judge and tried to do it out of the public's eye. Yeah, that was the uh, Jack, interesting thing. That's just that's even sneaky for a lawyer, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I was I was surprised to read that. But how did how did the memo come to light if it was confidential? Well, it, you know, it it, oh. it, it can't it wasn't con it wasn't totally confidential. I well, mean, uh, if Mark sent it to all the to all the lawyers. Oh, okay. Involved. Otherwise, they, he would have been violating the law. So but, he accepted a trial date, perhaps knowing that he couldn't be there, and then later was going to ask Well, there's to no perhaps to it. My theory is that's why he didn't want it in February, because he knew he could bump up against that April date. They want to push this thing out, like Jonathan said, for years. For years. And, and I hope that the judge sees through this. I know he will. Um, you know, it's time he needs to put his gavel down and say, we're having this trial. You're not putting this off anymore. You can file motion after motion, hearing after hearing motion. We're going to continue this trial because it has been long enough. And I think Mark White is nothing but the circus ringleader, personally. Well, he has three law firms and 11 attorneys representing him right now. If Mark White's not there a day or two, it shouldn't make a difference. After this last week's performance, I think it'd be just as good as Mark White's day. <laughs> I mean, it was not very good. Well, I mean, he, he just... was my attorney. I don't want him to sit home. Yeah. Uh, you know, Hubbard was not, it was not a pretty sight to watch Hubbard at that thing. He, he is rotund. He I mean, he has got so much weight. weight. And he slicks his hair back. I mean, he, I mean, he's buying out the Brill Cream, baby. <laughs> there are no FBI agents that, that can get okay, it Okay, Bill, all right. <laughs> Let's not talk about appearances. He's, but, uh, <laughs> and his wife. No, I'm joking. Stop, I'm joking. Stop. She uh, drives a beautiful white Range Rover, by the way. She drove it, it right into front of the courthouse well, this week. She, she's you know, a well dressed lady. Prosperity has its place. It That's does. right. No wonder he needed all the no, day I, contracts. I don't, you know, I just think that Mark was disingenuous from day one. We want our day in court. We're ready to get. This, this thing going and look at it. It's been, the indictment was October of 2014. Mm -hmm. It's now, you know, well into 2015, almost 2016. I mean, come on, Mark. Well, it'll be almost 600 days since Hubbard was indicted mm -hmm. before he goes to trial if Judge Walker doesn't move. And I, quite frankly, uh, Judge Walker has been overly gracious to them. He has given them everything. I mean, this evidentiary hearing, it was a sham. It, and he let him have it. He did. He let, and basically, he let them even even sustained uh, objections. Eventually, got he got to get the question out one way or another. And I think it was just judge trying to be overly cautious to say if he tries to appeal it to say, listen, I've given them every opportunity, but I got to tell you, based on those three days, I can't imagine what it's going to be like come March. If that's all they got, though, if that was the bombshell. They're, that's a dud. They, they got nothing. He might as well plea now. I mean, it, 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 they were flattered and hammered toast. I mean, it was awful. Uh, Jim Sumner got up, and they thought that Sumner was going to be like, you know, their guy. He was going to vote. I Save mean, their saint yeah. savior, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and they tried to get him to say that the some of the ethics laws were unconstitutional. I mean, Jack, it was just a... Well, I think basically they were, you know, they, they were trying to say, well, Jim Sumner gave... Mike Hubbard, the green light to do these things. Mm -hmm. And I think Sumner got up there and explained, look, there's an informal opinion and then there, there's a formal opinion. I can only come 
to a formal opinion if the commission meets and decides this is going to be the policy. Right. And and what what Sumner's saying, which covers his own rear end, is say everything I talked to Mike about these outside contracts were informal opinions because Mike. As we all know, never sought a formal opinion. Right, right. He knew what the answer would be: no, you can't have this contract. Right. And and in even in that that letter that, that that was released, it said in the letter at the end: as long as you do not practice as Speaker of the House, as long as, or represent as Speaker of the House, as long as you do we, all your activities are outside the state of Alabama. Even on that, yeah, he can't he, hang he, his he hat. He, you know, all evidence points that he crossed the line. On these things, but the fact that that they, these these advice, this advice, even written advice, does not give you legal protection, Jonathan. I think a lot of lawmakers better perk up. I think they should. You know, our ethics commission. We've had discussions uh, on the show recently about how we should do away with the ethics commission, especially the way that they're going. You know, when you go ask for an informal opinion, just so you can have paperwork. In case you're going to be indicted for something, just shows right there, you know in your heart that you're not doing something that's right. right. You're, you're in the gray area. Yeah. You're going to practice in the gray area. You're doing something a, a little shady. Right. There was a politician I once knew that said, well, it's a gray area, buddy. Well, if, you, if you're going to purposefully practice in a gray area and you need to go get an informal letter just so you can have something to help protect you, that shows you right there that you're doing something wrong. Yeah, I mean, we have a code of ethics so that government might on chance, govern itself, that's you right. know, control itself. And that's a very difficult thing for these people to understand. This is about the social contract that we have with the government, and we, when we can't trust them, we don't have that, Jack. Yeah, and you had, you had Hubbard out there beating his chest like Tarzan, that we've passed these great ethics laws. Names like Cheetah, you can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. I think that we should go back to having the uh, what was suggested in the Attorney General's office give these opinions because if the Attorney General office office gives you an opinion, then you can take that to the bank, that that's what they mean. Oh, wait, you mean an, a lawyer interpreting the law? Yeah, wouldn't, oh, that, wouldn't that be amazing? That would well, be amazing. You know, it, it would be nice to think it would be that way, but <laughs> a lot of times it's not. We're going to have to leave it right there. You've been watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You can catch news stories every day on alreporter.com. Like us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, and of course, always join us on Sunday morning. Thank you for watching.